The uh, M3 Max are closer than ever. In mere hours, we're gonna see new crazy computers that will make anyone regret buying their M2 machines. So, what's in the menu, Tim? The placeholder, titled Scary Fast, when clicked on, shows the Finder icon. So there is absolutely no chance we're gonna see anything but Max. And you don't have to be a fortune teller to know that the whole event will be described by M3. This Monday, we're finally getting the M3 series chips in tons of devices. Now, I think we should remind ourselves what the M3 chip is going to offer in terms of performance. Why is there so much fuss about it? Well, the main feature of these chips will be the 3 nanometer technology. Current M series chips are using the 5 nanometer technology, which is much less efficient. Smaller node size means a more dense chip, which has a positive impact on both performance and efficiency. So the base M3 will retain the same 8 CPU cores and the same 10 GPU cores as the M2. However, thanks to transition to more efficient technology, it's rumored to be 35% more energy efficient. From what I see, the biggest performance boost will be seen on higher end Macs. The M3 chip most likely will be only 10 to 15% more powerful than the M2. And here, the situation must be similar to what we have seen with the iPhone 15 Pro and its A17 Pro chip. Moderate performance gains, but increased efficiency. As for those higher end processors, that's where it gets really interesting. The M3 Pro is rumored to have 12 to 14 CPU cores and 18 to 20 GPU cores. Basically, it will add a couple of cores to what we have had before. But coupled with a more efficient technology and higher per core performance, we're expecting to get noticeably more power out of this thing. With the M3 Max, the situation is even more interesting because the number of its CPU cores will increase to 16 and the number of GPU cores up to 40. M3 Ultra will have 32 CPU cores and up to 80 GPU cores. And that is mighty impressive. M3 series chips are expected to be the most powerful and energy efficient chips ever made and that is definitely worth waiting for. But what are we waiting for? Answering this question might give us a hint at what will happen. Personally, I'm waiting for the 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, but of course the majority of people want to see new MacBook Airs. And these MacBook Airs, despite what everyone is saying, might not be all that exciting to be honest. Just think about it. The M2 MacBook Air was released in June 2022 and the 15 inch model was released also in June 2023. These are very up-to-date machines and aside from chip upgrades we shouldn't expect anything more. The design will stay the same with only minor changes on the inside. The same goes for the displays. The displays Apple uses now are really good. I'm saying this because I've used them. The 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs are equipped with decent screens with 500 nits of max brightness, B3 color support and true tone. There is absolutely no reason for Apple to take this test and trusted technology and change it to something crazy like mini LED. Even the color options are likely to stay the same. Midnight, silver, a space gray, and starlight. The only difference with MacBook Airs will be the processor and the amount of RAM. There have been reports from Mark Gurman about Apple testing 36 and 48 gigabytes memory configurations. 48 gigabytes will most likely be reserved for pro laptops, but 36 gigabytes seem like a viable option for maxed out MacBook Airs. Oh, and the base RAM will go up to 12 gigabytes from current 8. What I also think is that when these Macs finally arrive at our doorstep, we're gonna need a convenient charging solution. Like uh, this Ugreen Nexo 300 watt charger. It has four Type-C ports and one Type-A port, which makes it perfect for reducing clutter, since one charger like this takes much less space than five separate chargers. What's really cool is the Power Delivery 3.1 that this charger uses, which makes high-speed charging available for more devices. I can charge my phone, my laptop, my tablet, then another laptop, and another phone, all from the same charger. And the top port can give up to 140 watts of power, which is insane. I can even charge three laptops if I want, and the charger will easily power everything. Again, with fast charging. It charges my 16-inch MacBook Pro up to 56% in 30 minutes, which is insane. And such charging speeds are possible without sacrificing safety, thanks to the thermal guard system that takes six 
1000 temperature measurements per minute and adjust the charging accordingly. And uh, just look at it, so much power from such a small box. All thanks to GAN technology which is more efficient than your typical chargers and actually contributes to reducing the carbon emissions. Looks good, charges a ton of devices and has a robust and long power cord. What's not to like? Great charger, click the link in the description to get yours. But I think it's more interesting to talk about MacBook Pros because there have been rumors of some pretty exciting improvements. Meng Chi Kuo thinks that MacBook Pros are gonna be the stars of the event. There's even been an image of a box leak. Allegedly, it shows new MacBook Pros with graphics that somewhat resemble the style of iPhone 15 Pros wallpapers, but it's difficult to really say whether this is a real box or a fake one. So what will the new Pro MacBooks bring to the table? M3 MacBook Pros are expected to get slightly better displays with higher brightness and improved power efficiency thanks to new mini LEDs. Also, the iPad OS 17.1 has revealed the upcoming MacBook Pros might be getting the Dynamic Island, which is absolutely insane. I do like this pill on my iPhone and having it on my MacBook will only make things more interesting. There is a slim chance that these leaks will not come to fruition and be a demonstration of some other feature, but from what we see right now, it seems plausible. And aside from that, there should be no visual difference. The design will stay the same, the port selection will also remain the same. Here again, the confirmed change will be the new chips and RAM. As I have already said, the M3 Pro and M3 Max will have more CPU and GPU cores, which should make them even more powerful while retaining the same battery life. The M3 iMac, that's what people want. It has been appearing in leaks for over a year now, and despite being rumored to launch many times in some sort of uh, production hell. But now it seems to finally be ready. According to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the new iMac will skip the M2 chip altogether and go straight for the M3. This is a big move as the M3 is going to be a noticeable upgrade in terms of performance and power efficiency. Gurman also mentions an internally redesigned stand. He says that some of the computer's internal components have been moved around and redesigned and that the way the stand is attached is different too. It's not clear exactly what this means, but it's possible the new stand will be more adjustable or easier to remove. And finally, German says that the new iMac will come in a similar range of colors to the current model, which includes green, yellow, orange, pink, purple, blue, and silver. However, he also says that there may be some changes to the color options, so it's worth waiting to see what the final lineup looks like. Overall, it sounds like the new iMac is going to be a solid upgrade over the current model with a new chip, redesigned stand, and a fresh coat of paint. It's sure to be a popular choice for for many people. New iMac is definitely coming out, even if Apple doesn't show new MacBooks, it's just been long overdue for an update. All these uh, leaks and predictions are very exciting, but how real are those? Is there a chance that Apple has a different plan in mind? Well, there is a chance that this event will be focused solely on the iMac with the M3 chip and not MacBook Pros. First, the M2 15-inch MacBook Air came out just four months ago, and replacing it with the M3 version will definitely piss off many customers. Mac Mini, Mac Studio, and especially Mac Pro are still super new and it doesn't make a lot of sense to update them. But what do leaks say? One, M3 is going to be a 3 nanometer chip and TSMC has been having issues with quality recently. Producing A17 Pro chips for iPhones have been showing a crazy low yield of only 55%, which can make it difficult for Apple to deliver enough Macs. However, according to German, there have been extended shipping times noticed for M2 series MacBook Pro. This may just be production delays, but we want to believe that's due to M3 Max coming soon. I would love to see M3 MacBook Pros, but I understand that M2 series machines were launched less than a year ago. To me, it seems like there are two scenarios. One, M3 iMac and M3 MacBook Pros. This is the one we all want. Two, M3 iMac and the iPad Air with M2. This one is also quite feasible, but not sure they're gonna do it this way. Three, M3 iMac and M3 13-inch MacBook Pro. This one is less likely to happen since the 13-inch MacBook Pro needed to be retired two years ago. Anyway, we are holding our breath and preparing our wallets. No matter what Max Apple decides to show, there are gonna be nuts. M3 iMac, MacBook Pros with M3 Pro and M3 Max, more power, more battery life, and dynamic island. What is happening? Thanks for watching, guys, and see you after the event.